So, you're playing in the world of Dark Sun. Here's everything you need to know in under nine minutes. The world is almost barren. Due to war, magical damage, and attempts to control the natural world, the world of Athos is in the midst of ecological collapse. Deserts, badlands, and rocky outcroppings dominate the space. The known civilized region, the Tablelands, is bordered on all sides by deadly obstacles. An expanse of obsidian to the south, a sea made entirely of dust to the east, violent tribes and scorching empty wastes to the north. And to the west, well there's a series of mountains, ridges and cliffs that nobody in their right mind would ever try to cross. Everything wants you dead. This is not an exaggeration. The scope and power of Athos's bestiary is impressive. More so when you discover that many of the world's biggest threats come with psionic powers of their own. You're not safe, even at the Oasis. Many creatures have evolved to prey on those desperately seeking water, and those hardy plants that have actually managed to survive this desert environment, well they've got defence mechanisms of their own, and sometimes even psionic power. Even though some people of the world will not kill a stranger on sight, there is a strong likelihood that most would be eyeing up any lone survivors or strange stragglers for bringing them in to forced servitude and eventually taking them to a city to be sold. You may be thinking, well, at least this resource-scarce setting can't support any massive creatures. Not quite. Power that leeches out of the potent primordial elemental planes does provide sustenance to some pretty big beasties. And although there are not dragons roaming the land, that is only a technicality, as Athos has one true dragon who you should hope never to meet. The world is cut off. On Athos, there has never been a god. No being in the heavens that claims value from worship. Sure, some powerful creatures have said that they are deities, but divine power is literally cut off from this world. Not only that, many of the planes you may be familiar with simply don't exist here. A dark reflection of the world, called the Grey, does exist, as well as some elemental and para-elemental planes, but there's little more. These elemental forces are powerful, however. Individuals can swear allegiance to bringing forth the elemental power, which is how most clerical and druidic magic occurs in this world. More than that, though, there's no way out. Where other worlds can be travelled to with spell jamming helms, Athos is closed even to this possibility. Some speculate that Athos is hell itself. Magic is very different. Athos has no weave, no ability to innately power the spells of arcane casters. Nope, the only thing that can power arcane spell casting is plant and in the case of some grand rituals, sapient life. Many mages are defilers, drawing everything they can out of the natural land around them. They utterly destroy all plant life around them, and can leave the soil barren forever. Preservers, a rare breed, take only what they must. They leave plants weaker, but alive. Their spells, though, are weaker and less malleable. Psionics is also a chief power in this world. Much of what is attributed to magic in other settings is instead attributed to great feats of personal will. Psionicists can see the future, use telekinesis, influence emotion, and even cross space and time. Some study outside the watchful gaze of powerful tyrants, but most find themselves under the tyrant's thumb, doing their bidding. Sorcerer kings squabble over the remains of this world. Their tyranny 
knows few bounds. With a mixture of psionic coercion and forbidden defiling magic, they control a city-state each. From Greco-Roman influence, through Aztec, Ancient Indian, Phoenician, Indonesian, Babylonian, and Ethiopian motifs, each of these seven cities is as unique as the power-mad monarch who rules them. They enforce many different rules and laws, but commonalities among almost all of them include the use of slave labour, a ban on reading and writing, and the institutions of Templars, who are granted magical power from their sorcerer king through some rather complex and convoluted methods. And finally, you must remember on Athos, nothing is as you know. Fantasy races are here in some number, but none remains untouched by the desert's harsh conditions. Elves are lanky nomads, famed for their quick legs running across the desert, and also famed for their short lives. Dwarves are bald, and so single-mindedly dedicated to their life's purpose that if they should die in attempting to fulfil it, they return as revenant banshees. Halflings were said to rule the world once in the mists of time. Now, they're cannibal savages, confined to the last bastions of old, ancient nature. Other creatures have survived this harsh land too. The Thricreen are an organised colony of human-sized antiloid telepaths who have a taste for elven flesh. Half-giants are halfway to the height of giants, and are mercurial gentle follower types in search of a charismatic leader they can latch onto. Half-elves and half-dwarves, one formed of natural means, the other bred as a designed hardy workforce by a mad sorcerer king, shows the versatility of the humans, who do still cling on in this world. Curiously, the sorcerer kings were human once. Unlike the normal humans of this world though, they have lived and ruled for millennia. And their rules are absolute, with no specific favour to the race they once represented. Athos is stagnant, stifled and smothered. Will you live among its brutality? Or are the winds of change in the air. Thank you for watching. I hope this has primed you on everything you might possibly need to know about Athos or Dark Sun. I do have a longer video out on the subject as well. So with that said, I've been Tom, otherwise known as the Grunger Master. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.